Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Marketing, Media, and Money podcast. I am looking forward to sharing another amazing industry expert with you today. And today, I'm really excited to have Kim Sutton, because just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And today's guest, Kim Sutton, learned this the hard way. She's the host of Positive Productivity Podcast. She's the author of the upcoming book, Chronic Idea Disorder, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Overcoming Idea Overwhelm, and a business and marketing automation mentor. She lives in Ohio with her husband, Dave, and their five children. And I am really excited today because we're going to be talking about all the things that not everybody else wants to talk about, right? Systems, yes. automation, those are all the things that not everybody wants to talk about, but today... Kim and I are going to be sharing some great strategies, some tips, some resources, some action items you could probably take in your business that will help you to monetize it a little bit more. So thank you, Kim, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Patty. I'm really excited. So first of all, let's kind of talk about the journey because I'm sure you didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I think I want to, want to concentrate on automation and systems. And I read your website. I went to your website. I really love the way you did your about page. You kind of broke down those different segments. I thought that was really great. So tell us a little bit about that journey. How did you get to where you are today and how now you're doing what you absolutely were meant to do? Oh, thank you, by the way, for the compliments. And yeah, it's definitely been a windy path through a whole bunch of mountain ranges is the best way I can say it. But I, uh, to sum it all up really fast, I was an interior architect for a decade, lost my job after moving here to Ohio when the economy tanked, uh, got rid of a husband who wasn't ideal and got remarried to my soulmate. And when he kept on losing his job, I started my company as a virtual assistant to supplement our income. I couldn't find a new job in interior design, so I was working not much more than minimum wage jobs here in Ohio, and that just wasn't cutting it for our family. But a couple of years in, I had an awesome client who was looking for somebody to do marketing automation with a tool whose name will not be named. And she had a whole bunch of friends who wanted to use that tool as well, and they ended up sending me to get my certification. And that one sponsorship... So when I say sponsorship, they paid for my certification and my travel and everything. And in return, I did work for them for a discount, discounted rate. But that investment into me by them and by me changed the whole face of my business. And I started to see how business could be a lot easier, but also a lot more difficult. That is so true. And yes. sometimes we make it more difficult. Oh my ourselves. gosh, don't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We, we absolutely do. And I think that I always love to say... There's productivity and then there's just activity, right? And they're not the same thing. I know so many times when people say, oh my gosh, Patty, I, I work so hard and I'm so busy and, and I'm not really making any money. And I'm like, well, that's because you're just doing activity instead of productivity, mm -hmm. right? And well, I think one of the biggest changes I made in my business from a monetization point of view that changed everything for me was when I realized that people are you know, creative at different times of the day. Some people are night owls. I'm a morning person. I get up at 5 a.m. and I'm the most creative from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. And once I realized that if that was the most creative time for me, why was I not working for my number one client at that time, which was me? 
And that shift was everything. It was the biggest game changer in my business. So I think really shifting from activity to productivity is key. And I can't wait to hear some of the ways that we should do it. So I'm going to just start right there and say, what would your advice be to a brand new entrepreneur or a business owner, maybe somebody who's just doing some career transition from maybe being in corporate to an entrepreneur, but what's the advice you would give them so that they actually start this correctly right from the beginning, right? So they don't just fall into that hole, trying to do everything and not being very productive. So right from the get-go, what are the first things you would say they should do? Don't compare yourself to everybody else. Be confident in what you offer and set your own prices, but don't compare yourself to the prices that anybody else offers. I fell into a trap for five years because I, well, for the first two years, definitely, and then still for five years, because I was looking at what other people offered, even overseas, their rates, and oh my gosh, Petty, I can't compete with people overseas, their rates, and still afford, you know, to live. So it took a while to get out of that. And even when I became certified in that marketing automation program, I was thinking, well, I live in Ohio. I don't live in, you know, California or New York City where the cost of living is higher. So I don't need to charge that much. But it's not about need to charge. It's about what's the value that you're offering. And the value that you bring to the marketplace for sure. Exactly. So when I finally got that to click and to be totally transparent, that was just this year, seven years into my business, I'm a late bloomer. Then everything started clicking. I think that's really important too, because I think one of the things I hear people say all the time, I mean, I've heard it. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard it. When people say, I wish I had more time in my day. You know, I, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And the reality is, If you're just more productive with the time you have, we all have exactly the same amount of time in a day, right? Some of us are just more productive with our time than others. So learning to be more productive with Mm -hmm. your time, it's almost like you're giving yourself more time. Exactly. And Patty, if I can just piggyback on that, that's a big component of productivity. But I also found that the, the valuing ourselves and charging accordingly, when we can take on one client versus three, and really focus on doing the best work possible, our businesses can bloom so much faster because we're putting our best foot forward by not having to take on so much that we're not getting overwhelmed. We're not feeling like we have to stay up 22 hours a day to get our work done to make the same amount of money. And so it becomes so much easier to do awesome work the majority of the time. I love that. I think that makes a lot of sense. So let's kind of think about breaking that down. So when we're breaking that down into little action pieces, because I think that's what's really important, what would be the thing from an action point of view that they should do first? I want to piggyback on what you said earlier. Put your number one client first. That was amazing advice, and it took me too long to figure that out. So put you first. And then the boundaries are number two. But also stop focusing on getting stuff done don't think about the GSDs. Think about the prioritized purposeful actions. Checking your email and cleaning out your inbox is, if it's on your list, it should be at the bottom of the list, but put that big rock, and it took me the longest time to figure out what they mean by big rocks, but put the big rock at the top and let all the little smaller tasks fit their way around. So first is put yourself first. Second is, I forgot what I just said, but you know, prioritize purposeful actions. And then the third would be time blocking. Focus on one task at a time. If you need to close all your other tabs, don't even work on your computer if you can possibly help it. But so much of what we do these days is on the computer, but have one tab open at a time. And when you find your cursor scrolling across your screen to go open up Facebook and see what people are doing, remind yourself, nope, For this 25 minutes, I'm working on this task, and then I'll give myself a five-minute break. You know, that's the whole reason I ended up buying um, an Apple Watch, was just so that it would tell me when I needed to breathe, when it would tell me Mm -hmm. when I needed to get up from my from my desk, because I think that is key. And I have to tell you, I ask this a lot, how many tabs do you have open? I always have probably like 20 of them open at a time. I am really bad about that. Although I don't go look at them, but I do have them 
open and it always cracks me up sometimes when something happens and my computer goes into an update and then it closes down and I go into a panic. Is it going to ask me to restore or not? And, I, and it's really kind of crazy when that happens. But I have to say, I totally agree with you. Uh, social media is a rabbit hole. And while I love and live a lot on social media, not as much as people really think that I do because I do know how to automate really well. I want to show up on social media when I'm engaging really, really, I'm there, I'm engaging. If it's something that I'm talking about, like an article, I don't have to actually be there. I can automate that. So it's there when the people who are my right fit clients or who my audience is are there for the time for them. So I can be really productive by being careful then. But I will say that there was a time when every little chime and every little sound would distract me. And remember the days where they used to even be able to put on your resume when we were younger, we used to say, oh, we, we're a multitasker, right? You know, that I was had a big that. thing. I think nowadays people don't want you to do that as much. Now we, what we want you to be able to do is to be able to focus on doing one thing and getting it done and getting it done well and being able to prioritize so you can be productive. I think it's much more important now than being able to do 20 things at the same time. When I was submitting my first proposals, when I started my business, I put, I'm a woman, therefore I multitask. And I wore it like a badge of honor. <laughs> and looking back, I'm like, are you kidding? I, can't, I mean, because I really did think that multitasking was a great thing, that I could jump from one task to another. But no, because it really does take 10 minutes, if not more, to get back in the focus. Have you heard of one tab, Patty? Nope. One tab is a free extension as I use Chrome. So Me the too. Chrome users, okay. It's a free extension and you can click this little icon that is in your, um, I don't know what to call that bar. Full bar. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And it will compress all your open tabs into one tab, like line by line, what tabs you had open. Wow. But I use it all the time and it saves them all. So right now my one tab has a history of like, 500 saved tabs that I have one tabbed and the bandwidth just goes whoop, like right back up again, but I'm not losing them because I, I used to do the same thing. I was like, please save that, save that, save that. And I would leave tabs open until I could get back to look at them. And then Which those really never. <laughs> right, right. And then the computer would have to do the updates just like you just said. And oh my gosh, yes. But one tab saves the day for me. Yay. Now, I hope everybody was writing that down. That's a good writer downer. So awesome. I love that. You know, I have to say, when we're thinking about our businesses, we all have, you know, skills. So there's hard skills, soft skills, and then there's the things that we can learn, right? What would you say, considering what you're doing right now in your business, what do you do best in your business? And are those skills you had prior or are they skills that you had to learn? That's a great question. I love to talk about my idea generation and that's where the chronic idea disorder book is coming about. I get ideas all the time and I get them even more when I leave my desk. So going back to what you're talking about, your Apple watch telling you when to breathe and leave your desk. I hear that so much, but ideas just pop out all the time. I'll, I'll be taking a shower and sing another shower or another idea just came in. So the strategy and thinking outside of the box, that would be what I call my superpower. And I don't know if that was learned. I know that's not the answer that you were looking for, but it's, it's, it's always right been part though. of me. Yeah. I mean, I've just always been a creative and off the wall ideas have just been a Kim thing since I was little. I mean, my parents wondered if I was really part of their family or if I had a switch <laughs> at birth. You know, it's kind of funny too, though. I that is something really big for me. You know, people say squirrel, squirrel. I like to call it yes. brilliant idea syndrome myself. I like that name a lot better. So that's what I call it. I actually even have a small, you can get them. They're really small for like $5 at any office store. And it's like a whiteboard, but it's, it's really small. I actually keep it, it has like a over the door hook. Mine's over the shower door because I get so many ideas when I'm in the shower and then I just take the thing down and I write them down and it's in the back where the water won't hit it and stuff because I do get a lot of ideas and I also get them when I'm sleeping. And so I learned to just put a tablet mm -hmm. next to my bed because otherwise I like, I don't sleep well because I'm so afraid I'm going to forget them. Now I just wake up, write them down and go to sleep. And it's always exciting in the morning to look at the tablet and see what I thought of. How much money did I make while I was sleeping? 
for me right. or my clients. <laughs> I've found that bath crayons work really well. I can write it on the shower wall, take a picture when I get out, and I've got the idea stored. Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm going to get that because then I could do it in color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, well, that's even... Color makes everything better. Oh, it certainly does. I absolutely really love that. <laughs> that is really good. So what would be the strangest thing that anybody has ever asked you to do? So you've been talking about all these things you do. So what's kind of the strangest thing that somebody ever asked you to do? And you were like, what? What's that? So... In the early days of my business, there was a client who was asking me to make spreadsheets full of different movie titles. Just go on to IMDb and make thousands and thousands of lines of different movie titles that I could find. I did it because at that point I was saying yes to every single opportunity that I could find for work. Right. And I asked why, because that's the type of person I am. Why am I doing this? He said, don't worry about it. Just do your job. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, that I didn't do last question very why, long though. Why is a good thing? I like it. But that was yeah. kind of strange. That's kind of interesting. I just thought that was kind of interesting because I'm thinking that for somebody who does what you do, I'm thinking, oh man, people must ask you just like all kinds of strange things. So I just really kind of wanted to know what it is. And I'm thinking if it's in my mind, it might be in my audience's mind too. And now I well, want to get back to I your Can I share book. one other one, Patty, if sure. you don't mind? Somebody okay. else asked me to take a list that they had gotten from somebody else and put it into their mail system. Ooh. And it was bought. And I said, no, because it wasn't, to do. <laughs> yes. And they actually came back around and hired an attorney and tried to sue me, but wow, yes, but I, re- I printed out the can spam laws and sent it back and they dropped the case. There you go. Like, yeah. There do not go. put bot lists into your system and don't, don't feel like, because you are hired to do it that you have to, because you could get a $25,000 plus fine, just like you know, I think can. that's really interesting. And you know, it's really kind of funny. So, you know, I produce my magazine, publish our magazine. And one of the things that happens sometimes is people who contribute to the magazine will sometimes send me images with their articles and they'll say, Oh, this is the image I want you to use. And I'll say, well, do you own that image? And you know, they all have different ways that they say it. And I literally just from day one said, we will, if you own that image, tell me where you got it. I purchase all images for the magazine because this way I know that they were all purchased and I don't have to worry about that. So I think that that's really important. And then the other thing I want to say to that is I see this out in the networking world a lot. People exchange business cards and they think that that's implied consent to add them to their email list. And it is not, that's against can spam law. If you don't ask somebody for permission, they don't actually opt in or, or give permission. It is not implied that just because you exchange business cards that now you can add them to your newsletter list and your email list, your marketing list or whatever you want to call it. So I think, I think that's great that we're kind of touching on that. Cause I think it is a really an important point for people to realize that, you know, just ask. I mean, you'll stand away from the crowd just by doing that, that one Mm -hmm. thing in itself. And new LinkedIn connections do it too. Just because I accept your connection does not mean you should put me on your list. Absolutely. So there's always a right way and a wrong way to do anything. And I think people really show you which they are by the practices Mm -hmm. that they make. And a lot of times in the first five minutes, (laughs) right? I mean, very, very quickly, sometimes can you tell when somebody does that. So a lot of times I hear people complain about that. I always just like to say, thank you so much for showing me, you know, who you are in the first five minutes, right? (laughs) Before I invest in all this time to build a relationship with you. So I I have a tendency to try to always look at things positively. So I kind of love that your podcast is called Positive Productivity Podcast. I think that's really great. And I love this book. So let's kind of talk a little bit about the book, Chronic Idea Disorder. I just love that. The Entrepreneur's Guide to Overcoming Idea Overwhelm. I like that because I think a lot of times people do get totally overwhelmed. And not only that, but sometimes people have these ideas, right? So I'm in marketing and they'll come and tell me and they're like, oh, they're just totally overwhelmed. And I'm thinking to myself, an idea that never leaves your living room is just an idea, right? And it's not like you're going to come up with an idea. Rarely does somebody come up with an idea that nobody in the world ever thought of. It's not that. It's that you're not trying to reinvent ice cream. You're just trying to find your flavor, right? Some people like Rocky Road. Some people like Butter Pecan. But the reality really is we can get into idea overwhelm. So why don't you, can you like kind of define that? And I mean, you wrote a book about it. So in your own words, what do you see as idea overwhelm? Maybe one or two things that they could do to kind of 
overcome that when they get that feeling of overwhelm come over them. I just have a question before I get into that. How many okay. domains do you own? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I used to say that I, I like to tell people that I'm a recovering domain collector. Uh -huh. There was a time when I owned like 300. Okay. Um, now I probably own about 50. Okay. So let's go back to the 300, but I'm not going to pick on you. Oh, I think that's ahead. the first sign of having chronic idea disorder or you had a different word for it. But what I used to, what used to happen for me is I would get this great idea, go buy the domain, start working on the website, never finish the project and still be broke because then another idea would come in and it was like a rinse and repeat cycle. Oh, I got another great idea. I'm going to go buy the domain. I'm going to start building the website. Forget about the product itself, but I'm going to build the website and then I'm never going to tell anybody about it. And in the meantime, a new idea comes about. So just became this vicious cycle where I was getting broker and broker, but there's broker than broke. I just want to make that clear. There's oh, there definitely <laughs> broker than broke. And when you aren't finishing anything or when you're coming up with ideas on the fly, because all of a sudden you realize it's the last day of the month and your mortgage is due tomorrow. And oh my gosh, I better come up with a new idea really fast. It's usually a sign that you have to see what you're working on through to completion. So I'm finally getting clear on that. And I have two products that I'm regularly going to be talking about from here on out. But that became crystal clear to me when one of my mentors said, Kim, how many projects are you working on right now? And I said, oh, I'm only working on a couple. And he said, oh, really? Tell me what you're working on. So we hopped on the call and I was working on no less than 12. Wow. And he said, how close are any of those to completion? And that was a shocking reality to me. That because I was spreading myself so thin across so many different projects, it was going to take me another decade probably to finish any of them. He's like, cut it out. I want to see you no more than two. I think I compromised at three, but that was still rough. So, Well, sometimes I think an idea is kind of part of another idea too. And it's really easy to tell ourselves that it's not a new idea. It's kind of just another division, so to speak, of that idea. I used to have, well, I still do but I have this big, huge, like a race board in my office. And a lot of people, what they do is they kind of put things at the top, right? Oh, here's this and this and this and this. What I do is I put the names across the bottom as they move up. But what would happen is I'm a creator. And so every time something would stall for some reason, like I'm waiting for something, you know, like something out of my control, waiting for this to come back or this needs to get approved or whatever the case may be. If I couldn't work on it, I just moved to the next thing and created another thing. And then I created another thing. And then one day my coach helped me to realize that none of my projects were getting done because mm -hmm. I would just go to the next project because I was kind of stuck. And so I finally, with her help, Put up another erase board that actually is called my parking lot and now whenever i think of my creative ideas they have to go on the parking lot and no new idea gets to come on the board until something goes off the board so now my board can only have three projects on it as well but i still get excited when i get to put them in the parking lot that excites me they don't go away they're still there and it's amazing how many things i do i can pull from that parking lot and bundle them together or whatever, and that works for me, but it keeps me totally focused and out of overwhelm. So I can really see how that does. It's kind of just another version of having a million open tabs, right? Yes, exactly. And I love the idea of the parking lot. I call mine the idea bucket, because if I leave them in my head, if I don't get that idea written down either, or I always put them in my journal, I have a page just for new ideas. If I don't get them out of my head, then I'm constantly being pulled to work on them. But the second I write them down and feel like I'm storing them for the future, I feel more free. And then I can continue working on what I was working on because I'm not going to lose the idea in the process. I love that. It takes away the fear or the anxiety of thinking, oh, but that was really a great idea. It's written down. You get to come back to it. It's okay. Right. But now let's focus on getting things done so you can make some money and not only just make money, I mean, this is the Marketing Media Money Show, but it's also about who are you serving, right? Because we always lead with contribution. Compensation will follow, but we always lead with contribution. So I think that you can't serve more people or bring more value to the marketplace if you get caught up in all this other stuff, right? You have to be able to get to the marketplace so that you can serve. So I love being more 
you know, productive, but I love just positive productivity. It's just a beautiful thing. I love the way you said that. Thank you. I want to share, there was a, when I was in college, a new show was released and I'm going to be dating myself here for the listeners, but Felicity came out on the WB and there was a character who was a serial entrepreneur and he had this journal where he wrote down all of his business ideas. And right away I clicked with that character. I was like, yep, I understand that guy. And in one episode, his, his journal is stolen, like his apartment's robbed. And I felt his pain so much. I mean, if your parking lot just disappeared, how would that feel? Well, I always have things in more than one place, so I wouldn't worry. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's good. Well, this was late 1990s, so before the days it. of Evernote and <laughs> Google Docs and all of that right, awesome exactly. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine having, I mean, I don't think I was, re- I had it, but I don't, I wasn't living into it then like I am now. I can't imagine going back and trying to manage it like I do now. You want to know what my worst thing is? I'll actually admit it on the show. The worst thing that I do that I still have to fight myself all the time is that when I'm totally in the creative zone, like I'll think of things and then in that moment, like I'm not thinking as clearly. So for example, when I do something, like say I'm doing something and it's going to be something that I might do a presentation on, when I'm saving it, I will save it and add it to my desktop under speaking presentation, but I will also save it to the Dropbox. But I will also say like, I save everything in like five places. My husband's like, why do you save everything in five places? And I said, I know it's ridiculous, but I do it because in the moment when I need it, I always tell myself, I won't know what I was thinking at the moment and uh, and what makes sense where it would be. Then I get all frustrated and overwhelmed because I can't figure out where it is. So I have just found that if I put it in the thing it's called, that makes sense to me, but I also put it into what was I doing. (laughs) It's really kind of funny. And I keep telling myself that that's the one system that I haven't mastered yet is my overwhelming need to have things in more than one place. I don't even know what to say about that. I know. I knew when I threw that out at you, I was thinking, Ooh, Patty, are you opening yourself up right now? But I'm all about being authentic, but I have to tell you no, that, that one thing, that's where I, I still have not really mastered it as well. I mean, I have Dropbox. I mean, my goodness, but I got to tell you, I have a lot of things in Dropbox. So even within Dropbox or the cloud, still there's speaking, there's blogging, right? There's the magazine, there's my podcast. I mean, I have a lot of different things. And so sometimes things go in more than one place. So with my list, I segment everything and I'm the queen of segmenting, but I just have to get better at doing it. I mean, I guess if I could do it and you could do it like you do your automated stuff and I could just take every single thing and they ever gave me the option of being able to tag it into five places at a time, then that would be really great. (laughs) But I haven't found a system that does that yet. What about Evernote? And I knew you were going to say that. Well, and I'm not an Evernote said, user. I just need to put that out there. I'm not an Evernote user because I can, it, it just, I have gone through so many different systems and I cannot say anything to you about saving it, saving stuff to multiple places because I personally have iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, and Teamwork. I have it in all, well, I don't have Teamwork, but I do it in all those other things. But mm-hmm. I have thought about Evernote too. And I have to tell you in my Facebook group, I can think of at least five times that I have asked in my Facebook group under different things and said, you know, who can introduce me to a really great Evernote person? Because the thing for me is I don't have the time, right? There we go, um, to actually learn a whole new system. What I want is somebody who's an expert who could just come in and say, and I could pay them and they'd set it all up for me, interview me, set it up for me, and then just tell me how to do it. That's how I work. I even tried doing it in Trello once and, um, like it was even overwhelming for me. Now I have somebody who actually does that for me, but I do have to tell you, we can get in our own way with that. I can always find my stuff though. And I tell myself that that's all that matters. I never have a problem finding it things, but I think that's because I have it in so many places, mm-hmm. but there it has to be a better system. So I get have it. Have you ever thought about what life would be like if there was a clone, identical clone of you? As a matter of fact, I've wished for it sometimes. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, if I could just find somebody just, I'm I'm sure everybody out there has to. Have you ever thought, oh my gosh, if I could just find somebody just like me, I'd get so much work done. But I find it in different things too. I think, oh, if I could find somebody who at different times in my business, I have thought, oh, if I could find somebody who had the integrity that I do, 
right? Because I really, you know, that's my integrity is really a really important thing to me and loyalty. And there have been times in my business that I thought to myself, when I see other people that don't quite do it at the level of what I want or value, right? And stuff. So yeah, I think sometimes that I wish I could clone me. <laughs> I'm sure I everybody love, does. I love that you brought up integrity, by the way. But I, I want to go back to the clone. I wish that there were about five of me. One that would do the work. One that would spend time with my family. Because they have, unfortunately, when I've not been at my best productivity levels, they're the ones who have suffered. One who would be able to sleep 24-7. I'm just being real. Like, I want another me. I love that. Just sleep. Sleep, I found, is one of my secret recipes to success because I was I went for about a year and a half only sleeping two hours a night, and that quite literally nearly killed me. So I, just, I want one of me who can sleep. One of me who can just build out ideas and create content and one who can just have fun and do whatever the heck she wants to all the time. I love that. I actually have four circles. So um, four circles. So just think up, down, and across. And mine are nutrition, exercise, sleep management, and stress management. And I find that when you can get the nutrition your body needs, the exercise your body needs, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, I don't even go to the gym, but I do have somebody that, um, customized it for me so I can do it here at home. But, um, and sleep management and stress management. I think those four things for the entrepreneur are really where we struggle for balance. And if we can balance that now, of course, if you can balance those things, your body will produce optimally. And that way I can show up with my family because really the best present you can give is your presence, right? Um, with your family. And I have a schedule that allows that. One of the things I did for myself from a productivity point of view for me is I stopped working Fridays at noon. So I record my podcast on Friday mornings, which is right now. But for me, I stop at noon and from noon until five o'clock on Fridays is patty time. And that's when I do all the things for me. It could be hanging out with my friends. It could be massage. It could be get my nails done, whatever it is. But just giving myself that time really allows me on Saturdays and Sundays to really be able to show up fully with my family and not be thinking about all these other things that I have to get done. So I feel like it has made me much more productive by allowing me to be 100% if I'm 100% working on my business, I'm 100% doing it in every single thing that I do. Family, patty time, whatever it is, it's important to me. I absolutely love that. And I, I don't want anybody to think I'm lazy or anything, but the first thing that came of, or came to mind when you said Friday afternoons off was take a nap. We've been watching so many kid movies because we have three under the age of six and you know PBS shows and all that. And there's a song, take a nap, take a nap. And I was like... That immediately came to mind. I was like, oh, my husband and I can both do that on Saturday or on Friday afternoon. He's he's an entrepreneur as well now. Can I share one other thing that's really working for me right now? Oh, absolutely. Please do. So my husband is a video game designer and I've been a gamer. My whole family is gamers. We've been gamers forever. I've been thinking this year of what does next level Kim do that I'm not currently doing? So I've started gamifying the things that I know I need to do on a daily basis. And I've, I've assigned an experience point value to them. So my goal is to have 250 experience points every week. And I, I just, love it so much. And I'm thinking next level. Well, I, I just have to give credit where credit's due. When we first started dating, he saw that I had World of Warcraft on my computer. For anybody who's listening, and if you are a gamer, just I would love to know because that's really hard for me to admit as a productivity and automation expert that I game because some people would think, oh my gosh, that's such a waste of time. But that is like my relief. When I'm having a tough day with client, you know, I go in to whatever game we're playing at that time. And that's where I get my family time is. And this is going to sound so bad, but I'll shoot the bad guys, get back out and feel a lot better. So, you know, we all have our thing that we do yes. for me. It's watching General <laughs> Hospital. I'm, oh, I have to it. tell you, I've been watching General Hospital since I was really little. I record it every day. And whenever I need that break, you know, since I record it, whenever I need that break, I love that I'm the CEO of my company and I can just stop and say, oh, I need a break. And that break is to just go. I mean, boy, anybody who's ever watched a soap opera, if you watch them, sometimes it's, it's entertaining. You get, I mean, I've been doing it for a long, long time. 
and it's just one hour. Of course, if you record it, it's like 40 minutes. Uh -huh. And that is like my downtime. So I think I, I totally get that. I think that is really, really great. So Kim, how can people connect with you and how can they listen to your podcast? The best way to connect with me and find all the all my social media links and listen to the podcast is to go to my website, thekimsutton.com. Make sure you put the the at the beginning. So again, it's thekimsutton.com. And I, and I noticed that really you are the perfect guest where you come with gifts. So you have gifts for my audience too, which I think is really wonderful as well. Yes, I would love to invite our listeners and our community here to join the 30-Day Work Smarter, Not Harder Challenge, where every single day you will get an actionable tip or strategy that you can implement right away to start taking your time back so you can get away from your business and back into bed. Oh, I love away from your business and back into bed. Oh, I so love that. That was fabulous. Thank you so much. So here's this portion as we're getting ready to wrap up that I love. It's one of my favorite portions of this show, if I may say so myself. And this is what I like to call hashtag open mic. And this is where I'm just going to turn the mic over to you. I know we talked about a lot of things. My guests are always so very generous and I really appreciate that. And I want to make sure that I serve you as well. So if there was something maybe we didn't talk about in the conversation, it just didn't come up and something that's, you know, you'd really like to be able to share. I'm going to turn over the mic for you for a few minutes and share whatever you feel like you still have to say that you think that the audience might want to hear and another way that you can serve, but open mic. So here it is. Take Thank you, Patty. Well, you have been a prime example of what I'm going to talk about really quick right here because you've been transparent and authentic in sharing the real you and what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, the admission of General Hospital is right there. But as influencers, and we're all influencers, I believe it's our responsibility to be honest and share what's really going on. And I love that you talked about integrity as well, because we're not helping anybody when we're pretending that we're perfect. We're not helping anybody when we're only showing what's working for us. And we're not helping anybody when we're making false statements about what's really going on behind the scenes. So help your community by being honest and when you start sharing your true self, that's when you'll start really magnetizing your tribe and your community to you, and you'll start growing in ways faster than you ever imagined. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Kim, for, for being on the show with me today and sharing some of the great tips and resources that you have shared with us. Make sure everybody that you go and connect with her. Her challenge sounds fabulous. So make sure you take advantage of that because who doesn't want to work smarter, right? So that's good. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. And remember that sharing is caring. So until next week, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll have another great, amazing industry expert. So bye now. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast. To shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing, Media, and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.